Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks, another match of Beyond All Reason, where today we're going to be checking out the well-known, well-revered, maybe the well-feared Supreme Isthmus. Spawning in the northern section and representing our blue team, it's going to be China Semiconductor. Spawning as a 37 true skilled player, coming in with just a tail of silver chevrons. I don't know what the threshold is to get into the proper silver chevrons. I'm at the same chevron count as China Semiconductor is here, so I'm pretty curious to know. Either way, ooh, already opening up with three of those uh train or those uh, metal extractors rather i was gonna say transports for some reason i guess it's because i would expect this position to request a transport here and also somebody said transport in the chat but anyways opening up with three metal extractors does put you in a little bit of an energy deficit but with how powerful wind is on this map i think it's probably going to be all right here for uh, our blue commander here red commander representing the red team spawning on the front lines right up in the fronts love to see it a hearty salute goes out to the beauty who's going to be an armada commander Coming in as a, uh, yeah, frontliner here. Very cool to see. Already got three metal extractors and a solar panel up. Gonna be going for a solar-based economy. You know how I feel about that, so I won't leave a comment on it, but we're going into a couple of ticks here. We've got one tick queued up and then a couple of constructors, a couple of resbots, actually a lot of resbots, four resbots. Typically only go for one or two, but I guess on this map, eh, yeah, it does make sense to go for a few extra here now that I'm thinking about it. You do have a lot of trees to reclaim for all that energy. There's also a lot of these rocks in the middle, which are very important to contest here. Just like we do indeed see Glasswiz doing, sending out a grave robber already to eat up some of these rocks here. It's going to be a nice little metal boost for the green commander on the blue team spawning here on the front lines. Definitely an excellent little strategy here to go for a resbot on the front lines, but you definitely want to protect it from anything like, for instance, your opponent's units, their pawns, their grunts, their ticks. And here's a little scouting tick that's been sent across the map. It is going to be recognized here, so at the very least, somebody is going to try and deal with this. How much can it do, though, is the question. Here's the vision right now for the red team, and specifically the red player. Yeah, that tick is going to get a nice scout of the entire base over here for the blue player. Nicely done. Not going to kill that metal extractor, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, it looks like it probably could have gotten three metal extractor kills there, but not going to happen. Instead, just taking the scout of the base over here. Uh, and at the very least, revealing who's going to be playing on that sea line. So maybe Fiddler a little bit more aware now of exactly who they're going to be going up against here. This is interesting. We've sent a flying constructor forward here from uh, Blue Sonic X, who is now the backline player for the red team. I don't know why I said now, I guess for the entire game, they're going to be the backline <laughs> air player here for the red team. Going to be building some underwater metal extractors. And uh, I don't hate it. It's actually a pretty nice little move right there. Going to steal those metal extractors from anyone else who'd be able to put them out and it's oftentimes yeah a good long while before anybody's actually able to claim these so i think i like that quite a bit actually very nicely done middle of the map has been eaten up already no surprise there pretty much goes as quick as you can glass is moving very far forward with the commander here we do have a couple of beamer turrets set up over here interesting so we've got a construction turret on the front lines already helping out We've got beamer turrets coming up, and we've got gauntlets coming up as well. This is a strategy that was proposed in a comment under one of the videos, but I'm actually pretty curious to check this out and see how effective it can be. Essentially, the idea was that you don't really want to build static defense on your front line. You want to build it just a little ways back so that, yeah, when enemies try to run by or maybe they push just a little too far, you can start to punish them and then use your units as the front line rather than your static defense. I think that's probably a pretty good idea here, and it's exactly what we're seeing right now. Gauntlet is coming up. It's going to be a tremendous metal expense. We're not going to see any unit production here coming out of the Red Commander at this point because all of the metal is going into this. It's going to take a good long while before it comes up, at least another 30 seconds or so. But once it does come up, it's definitely going to be in a nice spot to contest. At the very least, all the metal extractors here, uh, well, most of the metal extractors here, there's still one 4.3 in the back over here for the Green Commander, but none of which has he captured here. Definitely an oversight right now. Not capturing those metal extractors actually leaves Glassiewicz with relatively low metal income that being said still a substantial bank right now working on the build power to actually spend it but definitely not able to at the time being yeah you push too far forward and you build a static defense and suddenly it's not really worth all too much if you don't have the units to defend it you can see these uh whistlers now just going to blast apart a lot of this forward static defense alongside this gauntlet who's going to start putting in some serious work yeah all said and done i think this is probably a little bit of a overinvestment on the front lines as far as static defense go from Glassu is and a little bit of a failure to eco up at the very least at the same rate that his opponents are here construction turret can eat up these trees to go for energy to help with this energy stall right now but this gauntlet is firing away and it's already chipping down and gaining some of that value six kills to its name and i have a feeling with how early this came up i mean this is a sub 
oh, I want to say four minutes and 30 seconds or so gauntlet right here, definitely going to have plenty of time to establish a, uh, a healthy amount of value on the front lines right here. Yeah. Oh, there goes the commander. A couple of Janices firing away. Peeling off one of those commanders right there. Glasswiz loses the commander on the front here. That's going to be painful. Yeah, it's a good thing we see vehicles coming out right now from Gen 1X, who is the, I guess, the midline player over here. Otherwise, uh, this line is broken, and there's no more production right now. Not sure exactly why. Oh, there we go. We're starting up some uh, energy production over here. Good to see. Yeah, wind, wind died off, and it meant that there was no energy production available for the green commander, anybody who invested in the wind, but it's definitely uncomfortable when that happens. Solar panels definitely went out there. Janus is going to be forced back eventually here by these Whistlers and these Rocketeers, uh, aggravators rather. They hurt like hell though, those Janus's do when they fire those twin heat-seeking missiles. They can definitely put in a wallop. LLT goes down and suddenly a firm grasp over the center of the map right here, starting up a geothermal on the front line here. This is a really nice play. I really like what, yeah, the red player of the beauty is doing right now. I think this is wonderful. We've got plenty of energy going to be coming up here from this geothermal. We've got these construction towers on the front lines, which are perfect for A, building the static defense, but also B, for maintaining any units that get damaged and need to be put back together over here. The bot lab has been eaten up back here. Are we sending these to eat the solar panels? We are beautifully done. Love what's going on right here for the beauty. We're going into T1 vehicles, and I think it's probably a good move. Going to go right into tanks, and I think that's probably going to make a whole lot of sense. Eating up the wreckage right here and maybe even trying to sneak in a 4.3 metal extractor over here probably all going to be quite useful here for the red commander but either way just getting those medium tanks up and running is going to be tremendously useful let's check out the battle on the high seas looks like oh it's a bit interesting so we have uh, a naval lab and a hovercraft lab that's quite expensive for canard here the uh, pink player on the red team yeah going into a couple of these halbergs and don't get me wrong the halberg is an incredibly oppressive piece of kit for the cortex commanders it's a really really powerful unit but it's also extremely expensive and on the back of a whole shipyard producing with a construction tower and everything as well it's going to be a crazy good economy to make sure that production stays up and running chief ski has done a great job of capturing this southern island over here but the uh semiconductor himself has or maybe herself has captured this island up north here and actually has essentially complete control over the navy yeah we've captured all of the metal extractors and shutdowns the one that were uh built here by the yellow commander who's going into a lot of wind turbines okay Blue Sonic definitely interested in some sort of a some sort of a early T1 eco cheese here, trying to go into a very very expensive uh, T2 transition here, trying get into well basically stepping into a T2 transition from a little further ahead than usually we see commanders going for this. But the weird thing is that we see basically Blue Sonic X is is doing the tech roll at the same time that they're doing air right here, so beating the yellow commander to the punch as far as the T2 air goes. It's quite funny. Obviously, this T2 lab is not going to come up in time because. The commander was all the way over here across the world, not sacrificed. That needs to be uh, blown up and used for metal if we're going to go for T2. But right now, the economy is just looking fabulous for Blue Sonic X, who's now got plenty of wind turbines, plenty of build power, plenty of metal. It's only going to be a matter of time before that T2 comes up. And now we're going to have T2 uh, aerial constructors available for essentially anybody on the red team who needs them. And I really like it. Sorry, I was focusing a lot on the eco back there. It's a little bit bizarre. Uh, so I was trying to catch what exactly was going on. But in the meantime... Looks like the base for the Dark Green player did indeed go down. That base, I expected it to go down as soon as their front line was ravaged, aka their commander was ravaged here. And now the red units have free reign to go into the base here. Do we have T2 units up and running? Oh, not quite. We're eight minutes into the game here. We're a little bit slow on the T2 transition. Right now, there's a bunch of T2 constructors coming up, but there's no T2 units available here. We need some hounds. We need some welders. We need some gunslingers. We need anything at this point in order to clean up these tanks. Sprinters would work too. Sprinters, uh, surprisingly good against T1 medium tanks, actually. Just the fact that they can avoid the shots most of the time, just because of how quick they are, really actually does make them a pretty good counter solution here. Trying to use the commander over here. Oh, these tanks are in range. Oh, 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 nice decon on one of the tanks. The other two, uh, three are going to be running away for their lives. Trying to, anyways. A little bit of friendly fire right there. Sure, eating up one of the Janices. Not bad. <laughs> a little unconventional, but not bad here. We do see finally some T2 units making their way out here. It's a couple of welders being pumped out from the back line right now. Nicely done by Cryptex ZZ. Uh, realizing, yeah, there's actually a, a mission critical breakthrough on the front lines that we need to address at the moment that hurts bombing around takes out a tremendous amount of these uh yeah a tremendous amount of these wind turbines over here eventually cleaned up by chief ski's air forces 
but still a tremendous detriment to the economy right now for the yellow player. Apparently, Chiefski unsatisfied with the uh, <laughs> unsatisfied with the way that a Bionic or Blue Sonic rather is playing this. Yeah, a little bit of uh, back and forth, less than friendly banter going on right there. This is pretty annoying. All these ships parked offshore right here. Definitely quite tricky to deal with, although a lot of them are really low health. Actually, it'd be really nice if we could shut these ships down right here. I don't know if Rocketeers are going to be the unit to do it, but certainly... Oh, why are they firing at the land? That's a bit funny. Obviously, ship's not uh, able to traverse onto the land, so that's not exactly where those are going to be. Yeah, it's going to be tricky to shut these down, but if we can, it's going to be a lot of metal that maybe an air constructor would be able to get. Go get anger management, says Chiefski. <laughs> Bar 101, space turbines. It's true. You definitely want to... Are those not spaced out? I could have swore they were. Hold on one second. Let's check it. I know we've been looking at the economy back here a lot. Oh, yeah. No, they're not spaced out whatsoever. Okay, yeah. Well, I got to say, yeah, bar 101. Maybe the unaware, so let's give a little tutorial here. If you hold uh, shift and alt at the same time, and then you hit Z or X, you can increase the spacing or decrease the spacing of your buildings. For wind turbines, you just have to give it one click and put one space between them to stop them from chain reacting. The more you go, obviously, the more resistant to chain reacting they are, but one is the absolute minimum here. A significant T1 force has been built up on the front lines here, but it's not like... Oh, you know, I was just about to say... I was going to say, uh, it's not like the beauty is really using the static defense anymore on the back line here, so I'd love to see it move forward. Apparently, the beauty, well aware of that situation, and going to be eating up this gauntlet on the front lines. Eating it up, of course, yields the entire metal back to the commander who so chooses to consume it. It's going to be 1,250. The same amount of metal as a commander, mind you. Going to be going back into the economy right now for the red player who is ready to step up into T2. We've got the T2 lab up and running. We've got the T2 constructor just about finished here. I have a feeling as soon as that is... Oh, well, okay. Uh, go, go back to eating. <laughs> Never mind. Apparently, we're not going to eat it. I think it's probably a good idea to eat that right up. I think it's probably going to work pretty well for you. You get all that metal back. Well, this is nice, though. At the very least, it's going to be able to fire at these ships a little bit more. Maybe that's how these got so damaged, was that gauntlet firing away at them. Yeah, you know what? Okay. If we can manage to damage some of these ships and shut them down, then I think the gauntlet will still have been worth it. Tricky to tricky to manage, and I'd love to see a rattlesnake more than the gauntlet. Rattlesnake's significantly more powerful, not significantly more costly, comparative to the amount of money you're making in the T2 area. You're going to be 2,500 versus the 1,250, so double the cost, but I'd definitely have, rather have one rattlesnake than two gauntlets, uh, for instance. Straight up to T2 here for China Semiconductor. Decided with the uh, lack of contest here from the Tan player over on the naval side, just going to be worth it to go all the way up to T2. I think that's probably the right idea here. I would love to see some missile ships up and running right now. Missile ships could easily shut down Ian Ertzen's base, the brown player here for the red team. Definitely a couple of missile ships would also shut down a significant portion of the power right here for the red player who's holding the lines over here. Now those destroyers are difficult to deal with, but that gauntlet is putting in some work. Yeah, a lot of these ships are getting critically low right here, and they're forced to retreat. Not bad. I'm extremely critical of gauntlets, because they're one of those one of those structures that is very easy to get a tremendous lack of value in. They're very easy to build and waste resources on. And that's not the case here, so I'm happy to see it. 13 minutes, and we're almost done with the first advanced fusion reactor right here. Well, almost, maybe a stretch. 67% of the way through, but we're spotty on the materials for it right now. Wouldn't mind eating up the T2 lab in order to finish all that. I think that's probably a good use of metal or sacrificing the commander. Either one of those is going to be a nice little boost to finish up that advanced fusion reactor. Remember, you can always resurrect that commander if you leave a little metal in the corpse. You can always go pick it back up, or you can always rebuild the T2 lab. Maybe a little bit easier at this point. Either one of those are going to make your economy take off a whole lot quicker. Sitting on the landmines over here, definitely less than ideal. Pulsar coming up over here. That's interesting pulsar is very very good against singular very powerful targets any any of the t3 stuff comes to mind but even some of those denser t2 things that can come out of the cortex labs like for instance czars or mammoths or sumos or anything like that that are particularly well armored doesn't do so well against t1 spam though so i don't know if i really appreciate it on the front line here sitting on top of these landmines is so dangerous a rogue shell from one of those hounds Basically, a rogue shell from anything, a rogue rocket, a rogue thug, plasma shot, anything like that would be able to detonate those landmines. It would be devastating to the army that's parked right on top of them, obviously. Going for a gauntlet and a pulsar at the same time. A little bit of a funny juxtaposition there because you might as well go for rattlesnakes if you're going to go for gauntlets. You might as well go for pit bulls instead of uh, gauntlets. There's, right, you're, you're already in the T2 era. It feels like you might as well just go for anything else. 
destroyer, uh, battleship rather, off the coast over here being a nuisance, firing away at whatever it can. It doesn't really have an effective range of anything that's going to be too big of a problem right here for the uh, red team, but it could probably snipe these metal extractors over here and might be able to do some damage as well to the wind turbines, the energy converters, all that sort of stuff. Either one of those is going to be annoying to deal with, but certainly not a end game sort of a situation here. Air Scout request one. <laughs> Putting in a formal declaration for an air scout request. That's a uh, that's a very official terminology. It's very very sacred. You know, you have to fill out your paperwork, sign your sign your T's and dot your I's, make sure that everything is all up to code. Still just going for crazy eco in the back line right here. I don't hate it. I think uh, it's it's definitely pretty much uh, expected. You're you're not really going to be Nobody's going to be disappointed to look back here and see somebody ecoing here, but it's a little bit behind the curve, it feels like. 15 minutes into the game, yeah, I feel like we probably usually see a little bit more uh, at this point. Definitely just means that this build needs a little more refining. It's also just a fact of the matter that Blue Sonic decided to go for the Air Lab, and I don't hate that. That's part of the reason why this is a little bit further behind, is because the Air Lab makes things a little more expensive, the constructors aren't as good. All that sort of slows this down. Also, the fact that he took a bombing run very early on to the face. Commander goes down over here for the uh, brown commander, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be Ianerson's commander that goes down. Missile ship now shelling away on all of this base over here. Yeah, that really sucks. That hurts. Hurts, and there's not a whole lot that the uh, brown commander can do here. We're in T1 era. We have T2, well, economy coming up here with in the form of T2 metal extractors, but that's very slow and steady. Nobody taking advantage of this pool over here. That's one of the resources that this commander can take advantage of in this position. You can go into this pool with your commander and build those very nice tidal generators, produce a constant 21 energy per second. It's more efficient than fusion reactors, or maybe it's exactly as efficient as fusion reactors. Might be either or. Still a very good use of uh, space over there, and it's a little bit safer. EMP bombers going to be trying to do some work over here. Oh, sharpshooters shot that down. I didn't see where from, though. Oh, up on the hill over here. I see. Yeah, okay, nice. Sharpshooter is definitely a good solution right there. Going to blast apart that missile ship for the very least, but also going to be useful. Do we have the expanded T2C on? Uh, we do not. What a bummer. That's like the default for me at this point. I feel like if I don't see that on, it almost feels like a completely different game. <laughs> Pulsar now up and running here. Pretty threatening. Oh, those landmines. Oh, no, the landmines detonate underneath all that army. At this point, a T1 army... It's not going to be the end of the game here, but it does suck to lose that for free. Gauntlet's now going to be firing away here. Mauser going to be instrumental in holding this line as well. Nice EMP bomber, though. Yeah, that's quite nice. EMP bomber does man manage to connect with, I would say, about half of that Hound army right there, immobilizing the majority of them, keeping them quite unable to fight back. Yeah, so that's the problem with that Pulsar. It can absolutely kill, I mean to smithereens, atoms, molecules, and otherwise pieces. Basically any, uh, yeah, any unit or otherwise that it fires at. However, if you're wasting all that energy on a unit that doesn't really deserve it, it can be a significant problem. A lot of sharpshooters being built up over here. This metal extractor should probably be upgraded to T2 as well. These uh, four-point-ish metal extractors, very, very valuable. What is it? Four-point-three metal extractors, very valuable to upgrade to their T2. Obviously, they make quite a bit more metal than their other metal extractor counterparts. Advanced geothermal coming up over here always gets me a bit nervous to see this advanced geothermal coming up. Very powerful, obviously, but also at a high risk. So, you uh, you make that deal with the devil when you when you start up that uh, advanced geothermal and you have to sign it when the bombers start rolling in. I like it so. We do have a whole bunch of whirlwinds making their way across at this point. Nice air response, though. Chief Ski definitely on top of it as far as the air goes. Making sure to shut all of that down. We've got the T1 fighter shutting down the T1 bombers. Lickety split. They fall out of the sky. Beautiful and dramatic as all hell. And that's going to shut down the bombing right there for now. T1 defenses falling immediately to the T2 units. We do have a shield generator coming up, so that's quite nice. We actually already have one in the back line here. We're going for another one. Don't mind it very expensive and they drain a tremendous amount of energy it's one of those things that i feel like people neglect a whole lot of the time is that actually those do cost a lot of energy in order to keep running especially once they're actually deflecting anything why is this not cloaked here that's uh that's a bit odd spy bots not cloaked all of a sudden i think uh the beauty needs to go check the settings here go into uh interface uh no sorry game go into cloak units make sure you're on advanced cloak units and make sure that your spy bots and everything are all toggled on if you've never seen that before maybe there's a little helpful tidbit of information for you one of the units that's turned off by default is the sharpshooter, and that should almost always be cloaked. 
easy to think that it's uh, not super important. And if you're critically low in energy, it's it's worth it to turn them off. But otherwise, keeping those cloaks can really keep them uh, well out of harm's way a lot of the time. A nice even split on the seas right here, but I think the eco is looking a little bit more impressive right now for the blue commander. We're already going for a black hydra right now. All right. It's quite a metal sink, but I guess if it manages to get some work done, I just don't know if there is any work to get done here because frankly, yeah, a lot of the base here is not built on the, it, within reach of that black hydra. Although I guess this whole midsection of the map is vulnerable here, but we already have two shield generators up, so it's not gonna have a super easy time piercing all that. There's also the pulsar up already, so not gonna have a very easy time piercing that either. We're intentionally turning the cloaking off here. I wonder why. I guess just to save a little bit of energy. It's 100 energy per second that's going down the drain right now. We do have a prude up here, so that's quite nice. It's gonna save the, uh, the, the base from geothermal detonation. <laughs> Oftentimes that can spell the end of a base completely. Chiefski lurking over here with the commander. Significant economy. My goodness, what are we gonna go for here? Blue Sonic deciding to go for a fifth advanced fusion reactor. At this point, we could have had a T3 lab up and running, pumping out a solid stream of marauders. I mean, you usually only need two advanced fusion reactors with their accompanying energy converters, about four or five or so, uh, in order to keep those marauder productions up and running. And uh, we're, we're going for well past that. So maybe Razorbacks are the plan, maybe Thors are the plan, significantly more expensive, but obviously quite a bit sturdier, a bit more expensive. Uh, in the energy cost as well. So it's, you need a, a few more. The, the ratio of advanced fusion reactors to energy conversion, converters changes. Nothing unbelievable though. Just need one or two extra. Bulls marching forward here. They're gonna find their doom. Yeah, there's a lot of units over here. We've certainly got quite a turtley defense. Some starlights coming out now. I like to see the starlights on the field. How are we going to close out this game, though? I really think we're overkilling it right now with Blue Sonic's ecoing over here. It's also a big nuclear vulnerability right here. I'm trying to point it out more for me than for any of you. <laughs> I suffer from failing to put up an anti-nuke all the time. It's one of my biggest weaknesses as a player. If I ever come across you on the battlefield, um, I threaten you not to build a nuclear launcher because it'll probably work on me. EMP Bombers looking for a connection here. Spybot revealing quite a lot of this. Let's switch to the red player's view. There you go. You can see they've uh, got a nice little viewing of exactly what's going on over here. Fighter's going to shoot down those EMP Bombers, though, and at the very least keep the units on the front line here from the blue team a little bit less electromagnetically pulsed. Flagship now firing away, though. Difficult to deal with. How much can you afford to spare to send over in that direction to try and actually wrangle with that thing? Is there even an effective way to do so? T2 bots certainly exist. There's the platypus, there's the duck, both of which are capable of going out into the water. I'd certainly favor the duck because it lingers under the sea where the uh, capital ship is just a little bit less less capable. It's more more prone to attack from submersive fire than from uh, yeah, any, any oceanic born laser fire. Not going to be an option for the beauty, though, unless he requests specifically a Cortex Commander, because we are all Armada on the front lines right now for today, for the red team. Anti-Nuke starts up over here, by the way. Nice uh, nice remembrance right there by the red player not to forget about that and suddenly lose the entire front line that's been so heavily contested at this point. Another one. <laughs> Must be DJ Khaled's biggest fan because his favorite slogan has got to be another one. More and more Aphis is coming up here. Uh, we're, we're hitting game ending levels of power at this point. We've got 300 energy or uh, metal per second rather. We're getting up to the points where it doesn't really matter how quickly we expand because we can just spend it all on eco and have it all up and running quickly enough. This is definitely we're hitting that exponential curve at this point. But the real question is at what point do you have to pull the trigger? Luckily for the red team, the blue team is not pulling the trigger right now. I really feel like these units could probably step forward and just win the game. Uh, you know, I guess it's a lot of siege units, though. Like we have a lot of hounds, we have a lot of Quakers. And then all the assault units are kind of T1. Maybe not going to be ideal. There's some Tiger Tanks coming out right now, though, but definitely the red team is going crazy, crazy greedy. Yeah, you can see a uh, metal income difference of about eh, 100 or 200 or so. 
depending on reclaim and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, very, very expensive, but also, I mean, you, uh, you get what you pay for, right? If you're going to be building an eco like crazy like this, eventually you're going to start exponentially growing. And the team that manages to do that first typically ends up winning here. So here's the difference. It looks like, yeah, Cryptex ZZ has decided to go into a T3 lab. And at this point, we'll start pumping out Marauders, I'm sure. Marauders or Razorbacks are probably the two most viable options. Although I guess maybe rushing a Titan wouldn't be the worst idea, but it'd be very late at this point. So it'd be a little surprising to see that. And Amphibious Assault over on this side, caught it on the side of my minimap there. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of these alligators getting ready to rush on through, 18 of them, in fact, getting ready to try and breach the defenses over here. We do have a couple of pit bulls, but I don't think it's going to be enough to shut these down. Alligators surprisingly hardy. They're one of those uh, strangely, strangely powerful units, similar to the bull, actually. You know, actually, I see a lot of similarity. Never thought about this before, but yeah, they bear a strange resemblance to the bull, don't they? This is a nice little beachhead landing. Oh, they're all going to funnel directly into the D-guns. Beautiful D-guns right there. Oh, that was absolutely lovely. Wonderful D-guns right there as the units were directed from the shoreline right into the path of Fiddler here. who gets some killer D-guns. That commander manages to shut down that entire pass. My goodness, what a play right there. Very, very nicely done. Semiconductor has got to be pissed that that didn't work out in their favor right there. They were definitely expecting that many alligators to have some such effect on the base. Did not expect a commander to be lurking in the mire here. Bombers coming in for an excellent little bombing run over here as well. Bombs are deployed. The fusion reactor goes up in smoke right there. That's going to be one player knocked off the base over here. Also, all these defenses are without power at this point. Yeah, Spallkip without all of the power, going to be plummeting into a death spiral power generation. We have a couple of, we have some energy coming in from somewhere. Oh, it's this geothermal over here. Okay. The very least the geothermal will provide enough power to stay in the fight right here, but that hurts a lot. That's two aphises down the drain. Resbots, of course, going to be able to pick that back up again. It's definitely what I would recommend. Spool Kip get right on top of. Yeah, going to start resurrecting immediately. Two Resbots is going to take an eternity to pick that back up and running, especially with only 300 energy per second here. But if maybe a teammate helps him out, he should be able to get back on his feet more or less eventually here come the marauders so yeah you can see the marauder production takes about 100 metal per second here um or rather well it takes a little bit more than that but the amount you can actually spend is semi-limited so four advanced fusion reactors pretty much enough to fund marauder production at a extremely extremely reasonable rate we're producing a marauder every eight seconds or so six seconds or so something like that finally going to start e-stalling we'll get maybe a little bit more of an accurate read here yeah, I want to say like eight seconds or so per Marauder. Still a tremendous production capacity. Even half of that earlier into the game would be much, much uh, better here. Oh my goodness. I think I have to agree with Chiefski. I think it's about time we do something here. We're going for more and more Aphises. I guess we're leaking a lot of energy. So at the very least, nobody on the red team has any sort of energy issues. Yeah, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of energy going into the abyss right now. More and more construction turret production coming up. Here and there, we've got the energy converters going. Tons of metal being overflown as well. You can see everybody suddenly has a tremendous surplus of metal at the moment. Fiddler doing a great job of spending it, it appears. Uh, putting it into a Titan right now, that makes sense. Sort of an eco build, I would say, I guess. Going for a uh, crazy, crazy eco, but leaking most of it to the team rather than using it on units or whatever. Frontline still holds. Constant tick stream coming out right here. Are these all rallied together? Yeah, they are rallied together. That's a bummer. You definitely want to spread these out. You want to put them on the fringes of your uh, your target zone. You don't want to send the ticks directly through. Usually, you you don't want to send the ticks directly through unless unless you're trying to waste shots here, which may be the intent. These ticks definitely wasting a whole lot of the firepower right now. We've got pulsars firing. We've got starlights firing. We've got actually we lost the pulsar here. I'm trying to find it in this mess. Yeah, it looks like it got destroyed at some point or another. capital ship slowly but surely popping everything over here radar comes up and running so it'll at the very least stop the besiegement from happening this is nice though the beauty about to finish up an advanced fusion reactor here 98 percent getting pretty close <laughs> 99 uh, it starts spinning away a little preemptively there it goes finally the advanced fusion reactor starts up and it's going to mean that we can finally start getting a little bit of an economy spiral going here a positive economy spiral Ooh, got to be so glad about that anti-nuke here on the front lines looks like it just charged up in time here as well just had one anti-nuke under its belt yeah well charged up a, a little bit before that nuke was launched but still nice investment right there by the beauty i'm sure he's very thrilled with uh thrilled with the way that that went 
nuclear launcher not achieving all too much yet by BH82926, otherwise known as the Powder Blue player from here on out. Going to eat up the nuclear launcher, actually, I guess, realizing, well, if that area is covered in Antinuke, probably the rest of the map is covered in Antinuke as well, which is not a unreasonable thing to assume. Certainly, the first nuke t tends to be the one that gets the most value, and if the first nuke gets no value, probably not going to get much value out whatsoever. Where have the Marauders gone? Oh, there they are. Lost track of them there for a second. There's a whole bunch of Marauder out on the map. Can't wait for them to do something. They could certainly punch through this defense over here. They don't really care about the T1 walls so much, so they'd be able to just step on through those. It means that they would be much more prone to, uh, or rather, Fiddler would be much more prone to being overwhelmed over here. Marauder not being used right now, though. Definitely a critical oversight. A couple of hover tanks pushing on through, trying to get some value out here. Beamer turrets coming up, though, so that's quite nice. Going to definitely be enough to keep the, uh, the, the scourge of the hover seas off of the backs here of the red player. A couple of light landmines coming up as well. Yeah, this is going to be addressed eventually here. These hovercraft, they cost a lot to produce here. These spanulatories for the hovercraft, yeah, they definitely they definitely take a lot of energy out of the bank. Would love to see some beamer turrets coming up over here. Beamer turrets pretty much the answer to any spam situation. They deal with it basically every type of spam reasonably well. Whether it be uh, T1 unit spam or it be some sort of a tick spam or a grunt spam or a pawn spam or basically any any type of spam even light vehicle spam they manage with all right titan does eventually come out here but here comes the marauder run by massive marauder run by at this point how many do we have in total here 24 marauders in grand total set this to that mode there we go get a nice little cinematic view of these running across the landscape emp bombers come in and try and shut it down Marauder anti-air missile, though, firing away, trying to shut down any of those EMP bombers they can. Fighters also pulled here by the uh, blue player, trying to shut as much of this down as possible. Looks like our camera's been frozen by the uh, EMP bombers here. <laughs> Razorbacks will be enough to clean the most of this up, though. There we go. What a messy battle. Razorbacks doing an excellent job of cleaning all this up. So we have, oh my goodness, so we have two T3 laboratories pumping out Razorbacks, spamming out Razorbacks. Boy, that's a funny sentence, huh? That's a, uh, that might be screenshot worthy right there. Massive, massive eco pumping out Razorbacks. We're going to switch to Titan production. I don't know if we can afford two Titans at the same time. That feels a little bit greedy. Uh, you know what? The energy in the metal might be there for it. Yeah, it's about a thousand, a thousand metal down the drain per second here, but the metal income is 700, so it's actually pretty damn close. I think we need a metal storage and an energy storage in order to balance it. Well, we have the energy storage. We need the metal storage in order to balance this out. That's a, uh, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty late game economy at this point. Not going to be hard to persuade the red team, or the blue team rather, back into their burrows with all this T3 coming out. Razorback's going to be perfectly fine for shutting this down. You can leave a single Razorback over here and it'd be more than enough to clean up the spam of hovercraft. Dealing with this capital ship is still going to be an issue, but two or three shield generators and that thing is completely nullified. You need basically two generators per capital ship. Not a unreasonable growth rate. That it's pretty easy to uh, to keep up with that that rate. Here the Razorbacks on the front line. Are we going to hand them over here? Wouldn't mind that. Handing over the Razorbacks wouldn't be the end of the world. We should definitely use them though. <laughs> Idling a whole bunch of T3 like this, it's always such a bummer because when you're on the front lines desperately hoping for some sort of solution to the end of the stalemate here, and you just have to watch all this T3 standing in the back, you're just you're just wondering when the trigger is going to be pulled. It's like getting a brand new shiny, I don't know, car or something, but not being able to drive it. It just sits on a podium out your front lawn for people to look at. <laughs> don't get me wrong, definitely something I can imagine Bill Gates type uh, billionaire, trillionaire, some some sort of person to do. And I'm sure it exists out there somewhere. But uh, yeah, go take it for a drive every now and again. Weird side tangent. I absolutely hate when people display cars rather than driving them. Maybe a little bit off topic, but it does irk me ever so slightly. Finally, the Razorbacks march forward. Forward ish. Forwarder. <laughs> More forward. It'll be the end of the spam era, but uh, yeah, they're still not turning off here. Massive reclaim field over here, funding the resurrection, the, the birth from the ashes here for Inertsen, who's 
trying to get back into this game. We've got a build turret up already. We're going for T2 lab already. Not nearly enough energy production. We need four or five solar panels, advanced solar panels. And we need, yeah, basically to step up the economy a couple of notches before we go into a T2 lab here. Ambitious to say the very least, but at least that wreckage field is getting reclaimed. Could also go for a couple of uh, metal extractors over here. Wouldn't be the end of the world. Capital ship getting free shots off on all of these units. In fact, everybody is getting free shots off on all these units. How, many, how much metal and Razorbacks Max is that in total? Um, oh, well, not you, Razor Max. There are some Razor Max there for the green player. Going to be a grand total of 45,000 metal and Razor Max right here, and all of it's being whittled down by these rocket bots that are just firing away, having their having a blast firing away at all these idle, uh, yeah, idle Razor Max over here. Push, says the beauty, and I think it's exactly the right idea. Where's your aggression, man? Here come the Titans, ready to end this game. <laughs> I think the Razorbacks probably could have done it, but the Titans are definitely going to be more than enough. There we go. Razorbacks finally pushing forward here. The Razorback forces for the green player are going to be enough to shut down the Razorbacks on this left-hand side. Commander goes down right there that was on the front line. It's a bit of an oddity why that was up in the fronts right there. Maybe it was just uncloaked and was left over from the T1 era. Either way, these Razorbacks have just waited a little too long, and now there's, yeah, plenty of defenses over here. Well, I say plenty. They're still going to go in a warpath, carving through all the persecutors that were built over on this side, blasting down whatever they can. But I think eventually these are going to be cleaned up and with relatively little loss here for the blue team. Maybe getting a little complacent right there. Titans deciding to take over the water rather than actually taking over the land. Interesting. Doing a damn good job of it, though. Yeah, you know what? Doing a great job of it. Took down the capital ship. Took down the Devastator over here. Took down basically everything that was here for the blue player. Now thrown into full retreat. We do have a T3 lab pumping out a whole bunch of Shiva over on this side, so that's quite nice. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I love that we're producing Titans at this point. Building those T3 units and sending them out on the field is going to be wonderful. I'm going to, going to help send the entire team back into the right direction here. I just don't know if we're using them as efficiently as maybe we could. Titan self-destructed. Nice bit of self-destruct micro right there. Making sure not to leave any corpses for the blue player to feast upon. Shiva, going to be quite dangerous for the Tan player to deal with here. Pitbull firing away. How much damage did that do to a Shiva? Was it about 8%? 7%, more or less? Not bad, but definitely not enough. Not one by one, anyway. Need about six of those. Maybe about 6D of those. <laughs> Get enough of them in a line, and I'm sure there'll be enough defense here. Shiva whittling down the battery on this uh, shield generator here, but it's not really going to matter. The rockets they fire are going to do plenty of damage. There goes all the static defense. This line is broken. The Titans are coming on over to help save the day, though, and I think the Titans will definitely be enough, but already the front line is broken. We're going to need to redouble our uh, our efforts here and make sure that we have pulsars and pit bulls and scorpions, maybe even. Anything we can afford to. These Titans have gone on a little bit of a warpath over in this direction. Lasers firing away at whatever they can in the sky. A little bit unconventional, but I guess their spotlights are pretty good for pointing out ships that they... Airships, otherwise known as airplanes, they'd like to uh, no longer be flying around. They just, I, I like to imagine they just point at one of them and it falls out of the sky. And in their minds, it's just a little game. The ship is... The, uh, the airplane is just like, Mayday! Mayday! We're going down! <laughs> Titans just having a blast, though. There we go. Yeah, I mean, 20 Titans. It's going to be enough to break through basically everything. The rumbling has arrived. Nice bit of hover tanks over here as well. These are the Lunkheads, the Armada hover tanks. I like them quite a bit more than the unmodified Cataphracts. There is that mod that we have that we play with on the stream Saturday and Tuesdays, by the way, in case you'd like to join up and follow over on that. It's right here on YouTube, so you don't really have to go anywhere. Why more? I mean, I guess if you're if you're gonna be uh, going for titans per second, you might as well eco like a madman, and this is just definitely ecoing like a madman. The uh, the modified cataphract fires a little turbo laser, rather than uh, rather than firing the old the old uh, regular one long blast of energy. These AFK titans really hurt my soul. The Razorbacks I could deal with. The Razorbacks it was fine. Titans, though, that's where that's where I draw the line. The MP bombers having a feast over here as well. My goodness. Fighters are pulled. I can understand the reluctance by the uh, hot pink player to even pull the fighters over here. Seems a bit pointless to engage in this battle. 
What on earth are those titans even doing over there on that island? <laughs> the enemy main base is that way, good sir. Lunkhead's having a great time. Pushing on up the beachhead over here and shutting down a whole lot of the static defense. Not going to be much of a contest for these Razorbacks, though. Razorbacks much, much more powerful than the hovercraft ever would be. One rogue shot, though, does manage to pop the energy converters. Chain reacts to take out all of the build power over here. And very annoying. Once again, Spolkin is sent back. Not quite as, as far as the first time, but still sent back a good long ways. As, uh, yeah, now the build power has all been dealt with. That's going to have to be rebuilt here. A couple of butlers still available, though, so those should be more than enough to deal with some of this. Submarines having a feast over here as well. Tons and tons of Titans. Continuing on. What a funny way of using Titans. I really feel like we should be sending these in to actually do some damage on the other side of the map, but rather we're just going to use them as glorified hovercraft. <laughs> hovercraft that don't hover. Stagnant hovercraft? I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what you call that. A wash in the light of the infinite bombing run. Tons and tons of mammoth remaining strong, holding arms. Linking arms to hold in there. And uh, yeah, all those bombers get shot out of the sky as well. Cleared out basically everything except the mammoths, so I guess that's nice, but still. Feels like those mammoths essentially were unaffected by that. My goodness, I can't believe these Titan aren't marching across here. How many Titan do we have in total? 23 Titan, or a whopping 310,000 metal worth of Titans over here. Uh, I happen to know just how long this replay is and cannot fathom the decisions that are made in which these Titans don't go win the game right now. I'm going to have to speed this up to 4x speed because for some reason or another, these Titans aren't across the map completely winning the rest of this match right here, and I cannot figure out exactly why. They'd rather stay in the water here and die one by one to submarine fire. Just about the least efficient way you can lose your Titans is to submarines. There we go. There we go. The march of the Titans has begun. <laughs> Not sure why this took so long. Really feels like this should have been uh, you know, the very first thing that we did with these bad boys. There goes a whole lot of those mammoths, so that's quite nice. Those are actually surprisingly difficult to deal with, especially as an Armada player. You have all the tools, but oftentimes you need quite a lot of them in order to deal with an effectively unbroken wall of mammoths. You need a crazy amount of sharpshooters, you need some sort of extremely powerful T3. Vanguards or Razorbacks or anything like that. Razorbacks actually not even really ideal just because of the fact that they can't outrange those mammoths. What on earth is the blue team going to do to manage to stop this? Though? They just don't see how they're going to be able to. No anti air included with this composition. It really is a bummer. Just spamming anti air trucks and sending them to the front line, even if they die after a couple of shots, still whittling down the air forces over here would be quite nice. EMP bombers really saving the day right here now. Half of them EMPing themselves, that's pretty funny. It's the last time you saw an, seen an EMP EMP bomber. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? If we're just gonna keep them completely EMP'd, Commander's gonna have a field day degunning them down. Quite a rank up. There we go. Sure. Down they go, one by one. Not set to target the commanders either here. That's a bit of a blunder. Wow. I don't know if I've ever seen 500,000 metal worth of T3 units go down the drain just as quickly as I just did right there. That was spectacular. Losses on an unprecedented scale here. No wonder we're going for more eco if we're just going to throw it away like that. I think probably going for a change of tactics might be a good idea here. At the very least, throwing in two or three T1 labs to spam some units out while you're going for T3. Yeah, that would just tickle me completely pink. More eco coming up right here for the red team. The red team at 2.4 thousand metal in total, 166 thousand energy in total. Blue team lingering around 2 thousand metal and 150 thousand energy. Not so far behind in the energy deficit, but definitely lingering a little bit further back in the uh, metal production center. There we go. I agree, definitely need to cloak this commander over here. Clear those, but yeah. Cloaking the commander definitely helps increase his survivability, but quite a significant factor. Feels like both teams definitely struggling to close out this game here. Neither one sure exactly what they want to do as far as an endgame solution goes. Big old hovercraft spam is set up a little further back this time. Not the end of the world. 
Love the uh, shore-based aphises over here. I'm not sure exactly why these were built here. I guess it was the constructors. Yeah, it must have been these construction ships. Yeah, okay, I see. So they're chained onto the C2 constructor. I guess it means that, uh, yeah, the aphises had to be built close to the shoreline. <laughs> Feels like a funky kind of a strategy, but I guess whatever works, works. Um, push. Go. March. Let's speed this up again. Loving this new computer and its ability to handle all this. FPS is definitely tanking here, but we're still able to keep, uh, you know, reasonable FPS while still speeding through this game right here. So impressive for me, man. One of the things that always I, I appreciated about this game is the thing that initially drew me into this game and has kept me here since. It's just the fact that each player, there's eight players per team. Uh, you know, I'm a little desensitized to it at this point, but it is amazing that there's eight players per team and each one of them can control an army, you know, of unprecedented size. An army that's beyond all reason, if you will. And uh, the game just, you know, keeps on chugging along. <laughs> pretty, pretty impressive if you ask me. There we go. Finally starting up a win condition here. Looks like it's going to be, yeah, the Maroon player who's starting this up. And I do agree that they don't have the energy for this right now, but somebody had to do it. So I'm glad that at the very least somebody is contributing here. Looks like the Red Commander is also contributing a lot of build power to this. So even if they don't have the energy to fire it, it will come up here eventually. Thank goodness, though, because we're going to need something like this in order to actually reach the end of this match here if these Titans don't start moving. Maybe just to prove me wrong, they've started doing exactly that. The Titan's marching forward right now. We've got a whole bunch of anti-air firing, a whole bunch of Zars going down to the mobile pulsar beams mounted on the backpacks of all these Titans over here. It's a, uh, it's a pretty oppressive force of Thors here, I've got to say. And the Thors do, of course, have their EMP missile. Makes them basically the perfect Titan killers. There they go. EMPing whatever they feel like. Perfect for blasting away at those Titans, too. And I want to say it's about 5% or so that they strip off the Titans' health bar every time that they attack. Counter push over here with Thor's does manage to break the front lines. Nicely done. Fighters pulled now. Blue team does spot the wall cannon coming up, so that's nice. At the very least, they're aware of their imminent doom. Always nice to be aware of your imminent doom. Titan's going to start working on this offshore harassment over here couple of titans deciding, wait a minute, we can probably break through the line. We have the HP. What a wreckage field. The MP missiles do connect over here, though. That's funny. Yeah, Thor is, you know, I never thought about it, but the Thor is essentially the perfect EMP weapon, or the perfect uh, anti-titan weapon, just because of the fact that they can EMP them down. And, well, good as a unit that's emp even if it's a T3 unit, Thor's going to have no problem blasting apart those Titans. Especially in big enough numbers like this. In total, looking at a grand total of 153,000 metal Titans. Or, sorry, of Thor's. Compared to uh, 189,000 of Titans. Yeah, nicely done. Turns out, being aggressive with your units is a lot more valuable than being defensive with your units right here loads of these units going down right here. Not nearly enough build power to put this together quick enough here. Yep. Thor's uncontested on this right-hand side. There's no answer to these. Double Titan production is back up and running right now. We're producing them just about as fast as we humanly can. These Thor's are still in a warpath. No answer yet. Advanced fusion reactors pop. They take out a significant portion of the economy over here. Certainly shutting down the Maroon player, but basically anybody else nearby as well. The stores aren't done yet, though. About 1% every time those Titans fire their impulse cannons. The Pulsar Beam doing quite a bit more. Especially if there's flanking damage right here. Finally going to be able to burst down those stores, but a significant amount of damage was done over here. Nicely done. BH82926 trying to make his way across over here. Cheeky Powder Blue Commander looking for a kill. Probably going to find it over here. Do we have any radar presence to detect this commander? Uh, no. Oh, okay, yeah. Slipping between the radar fields right here. That's quite funny. Yeah, the Powder Blue Commander on a little bit of a warpath right now. Ready to go shut this game out. A lot of EMP bombers. 
be careful overproducing those EMP bombers. They're essentially useless against Thors and Juggernauts. Great against Titans, as we've seen, but essentially useless against any of those other units. Commander does make it over here. Whoa, economy pops over on this side. Can't even see what killed. Oh, it was the capital ships. The capital ships managed to pop that economy. Looks like the commander was finally spotted over on this side. <laughs> Bombers completely missing that uh, that commander at first here. Eventually they're going to get it. Explosion still sh shuts down this laboratory over here. I mean, for a commander at this late into the game, I guess that's probably just about as much value as he can get. Retribu retributory Titans pushing out into the water here, trying to kill these uh, capital ships that have done so much damage. Bombers actually going to be wonderful for taking out these capital ships as well. Not a whole lot of anti-air available over here. Fighters are being pulled. That's just about the most of it. I'm wondering if a mixed composition of T3 forces might be better here. Go for some Razorbacks, go for some uh, Vanguards, go for some Thors, and then go for some Titans. Maybe go for Thors instead of Titans here. Yeah, you know what, I think I would prefer the Thors over the Titans just for the fact that they can't be EMP'd. Removes a significant weakness that those Titans do have. The Titan's obviously very powerful for how mobile they are, and also for that pulsar beam they carry in their backpack, but still, I think having the Titans, uh, yeah, continue moving rather than stalling every single time that the EMP bombers are whipped out, probably be pretty useful. I have to imagine it would. At this point, the battle is essentially equal. There's so much metal reclaimed that it's going to be up to whoever is reclaiming more of the map here than essentially whoever is producing the most metal. Tons and tons of energy production right here coming out of the uh, red backline, but actually more energy production coming out of the blue. Interesting. Yeah, more, more energy for the blue team, but more metal for the red team. I think either of these teams sending their armies marching forward would pretty much result in a win here. Titan's not ideal anti-air, though. Unfortunate that we don't see these accompanied by any measure of anti-air. Even just a T1 spam of anti-air units, the little trashers or uh, crossbows, sending those forward and using them as a means of keeping your Titans protected from the air forces. I like it quite a bit. Big bombing run sent up north here. Scouting planes are going to find it. Fighters will not be pulled. Oh, there they go. Okay, fighters will be pulled. And in fact, we'll find all of these T2 bombers. That's going to be a nicely cleaned up little bombing run right there. Nicely done by the purple player. Titans walking right out into submarine infested waters. Going to shut down some of those capital ships. Not really gaining much of an advantage right here. Maybe if they manage to push all the way back to the blue base, I guess they could do some damage, but these Titans are so resistant to the idea of pushing into any base and doing some damage. Instead, more interested in just holding the front lines right now. We have the spam of units set up by Chiefski here. Pro player res. I mean, I think it's a great idea to resurrect on this front line whenever you can. Gonna be much more useful, those units, in uh, your color than just as metal in the bank that nobody's actually able to spend. Yeah, these Titans, man, just have not been very effective this game. We could at the very least peel four or five of them off and send them on this other side over here, trying to grasp some different sides of this map here. Behemoth's now coming out in mass as well. We're building, uh, what is that, a behemoth every 30 seconds or so? Maybe every uh, 40 seconds or so? That's quite funny. Yeah, it looks like our yellow hero over here has just ran out of space to eco. No more, no more room for it. 2,000 metal per second here. <laughs> Having a hard time spending it all, it looks like. Yeah, those titans, man. It's so disappointing seeing them not be able to do very much whatsoever. Rotter finding the uh, little outpost set up on this island over here. Not a whole lot. There's a T2 lab and some constructors and whatnot, but those Marauder will be happy to tear down the T1 light defenses. Torpedo bombers shutting down some of these Marauder before they make landfall over here. Ah, but is it going to be enough? You know what? Those Marauder are actually making it pretty far. Uh-oh. Yeah, Grenard not able to uh, resist these Marauder that are coming in right now. One of them manages to pop its head out of the water anyways. 
slowly but surely the Marauder are going to make landfall here. Start picking apart the pink players. Well, not main eco center, but definitely one chunk of the economy over here. A bunch of the build power gets popped at the very least. That's not a crippling blow, but it's definitely something. Looks like the Titans decided to march on forward here. It's basically no effect. How devastating. Looks like a calamity starts up right here for the green player as well. Start building one of those big guns. Marauder over on this side will be shut down. Oh, actually, they were stopped. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of an ABM stall there. Probably busy dealing with those Titans that push forward over here. Yeah, there's uh, now an infinite source of metal lying on the battlefield over here. If we check the numbers real quick. Oh, my good lord. Three, no, sorry, 781,000 metal lying across the high seas in the middle of the Supreme Straits. My goodness. Destruction on an ever-unprecedented scale. Beautiful to see in some respects, but also, how has nobody closed out this game at this point? would be an effective strategy up, in, up until, well, up at this point, is to, uh, yeah, re resurrect all this stuff. Just make resbots. Spam out hundreds, if not thousands, of resbots. Use them to patch up any T3 units that are sent across to your field. Definitely an effective strategy. So surprised by the lack of aggression over on this right-hand side. We've seen a couple of hover tanks, like T1 hover tanks. We saw those brief uh, T3 hover tank pushes. I feel like there's definitely some more to be gained over there. Diversity of strategy is definitely what we're lacking right here, though. How many Titans have we seen go down this game? It's got to be hundreds at this point. Probably a couple, probably like, eh, yeah, probably about 100 Titans or so have gone down. How much more effective would 100 Thors or 50 Thors and 50 Titans have been? Something like that, you get what I'm saying? Mixing up the strategies and keeping them fresh, definitely very important. Submarine's going to spot these Marauder that are working in the depths over here. That's a nice catch for those Barracuda. Oh no, sorry, these are the Predator. A model one's a Barracuda. Big old bombing run is building in the back line. Yeah, it looks like the blue team is a little more focused as far as determined to finish this game goes. <laughs> Feels like the red team is all working in disjoint here. Ragnarok finally finishes up right now. Doesn't have an effective target. Uh, you know, not really. Oh, it's going to start taking down this Juggernaut over here. That's quite funny. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's about a percent per shot that it fires, and it fires them pretty quick. Going to dissuade that Juggernaut from pushing forward in that direction. Definitely a persuasive cannon. Anti-airboat's doing a great job whittling down these fighters over here. I actually love to see that. Yeah, those, those, uh, ooh, those flak trucks, flak boats rather, shutting down a tremendous portion of the ant or the aerial forces right here for Corny, the uh, level 20 German player, I do believe. What is, is this, is this Austria and Germany? What is, what is this flag right here? One of these has to be Germany, but I don't know which one. <laughs> Same color scheme, but kind of rearranged and reoriented in some such way. Hmm. I hope somebody lets me know in the comment section down below. How many times have we seen these Titans wander out into the water? And how many times have they been successful in their mission, uh, only for them to not do anything with that success? Just go out there and kill some units, leave the corpses to be reclaimed and resurrected, retreat back to land, repeat. main bases for the beauty. Rebuilding over here. A lot of shielding, but it is slowly being drained. One by one, those shields are falling. I'm not sure how many you need in order to resist a uh, Ragnarok, but it looks like five is doing a decent enough job. Ooh, but down goes the build power, and eventually there's just no stopping that cannon from firing through those plasma gates right into the heart of the red players. Well, relocated base over here. Oh, another explosion as more energy converters go up and smoke over there. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a very devastating aggression to deal with. 
annoying to say the very least, but devastating at its very worst. Just waiting for that aphis to pop, and it shouldn't be too long now. Brood also with significant damage. Oh, and there it goes. Advanced fusion reactor pops. Takes down that entire side of that uh, production center, that uh, base right there. Uh, can we? No, there's not really a good firing angle to get into this base over here, unfortunately. Could try and fire at this mountain over here. End up firing well into the back line. You can see the uh, you can see the, the yellow lines sort of down over in this section. You can see them from the targeting reticle right here. Could fire over the mountain uh, and intentionally miss in order to place some shots directly in the back line. Titans finding the densest, most well-compacted and fortified area known to mankind and trying to push through it rather than taking any other angle that might yield a better result here. Big ol' bomber wave coming in on the northern front. Several Marauder on the southern side. Grand total of, well, this including, whoops, whoa, whoa, this including these Marauder. 102 Marauder. <laughs> There's a lot of Razorbacks down there, but I don't think they're going to be able to stop 102 Marauders coming in for the kill here. Here come the bombers. Trying to find an open target. There just effectively isn't one, though. Oh, oh, they're getting pretty far, though. Tell you what. Anti-air is thick. Anti-air is incredibly thick. <laughs> My goodness, the anti-air is thick over here. Yeah, I guess Blue Sonic not willing to lose the base to that, but it won't matter. Enough corpses rain down from above in order to shut down and chain react and devastate all of the energy income here for the yellow player. That is devastating. All the build power is gone. All of the energy converters are gone, save for maybe about a third of them. What a crash. Death by self-destruction is what we're going to coin that one. 100 Marauder enter. Maybe one, two, or three will leave. A couple running along this uh, left-turn side here. It's become my new favorite word, by the way. Left-turn. Oh, no, not quite. Keep going, boys. Okay, not gonna happen. The Behemoths have finally made their long march all the way down here. Titans do manage to shut down one of them. There's three more on the tail end. Another Ragnarok built over on this island as well gonna be firing it, right? That's cute. Yeah, I mean, not a whole lot that uh, Fiddler is going to be able to do against uh, uh, Ragnarok firing directly into their base right there. Anti-air bots, T1 anti-air bots being spammed out here as well. Anything to try and shoot down these EMP bombers. I actually quite like it. That's what I was talking about earlier. I think it's definitely well worth it. Yeah, those EMP bombers are going to have a bad day flying over all that. Uh, Razorbacks. Doing a decent job dealing with these cataphracts. No reason for the cataphract to move it within range of those Razorback, but, uh, you know, I suppose they're willing to have a fair fight, at the very least. It's sportsmanlike of them. Something like 60% of all unit types are being used. I love it. Well, that's a fun stat. Amount of different types of units that are available in the game being used. Love that. <laughs> Stubby here in a little bit of trouble. Looks like we're going to sacrifice all these Marauder here to kill the commander. Yeah, I think this Aphis is probably a way better target. There we go. Aphis does pop. Takes out another base right here for the Orange player. And successfully, one by one. Yeah, the red team is just being picked apart right here. The blue team seems like they're uh, just more hell-bent on winning this game right now. I have to say, it just feels like they're willing to win this game. They're willing to do whatever it takes to close this match out with the blue, or the red team, rather. Only willing to do whatever it, uh, you know, whatever whatever ruts they're stuck in. They don't they don't feel like leaving them here. I'll tell you what, the more creative team is going to find the solution to this never-ending answer. It's a lot of starlights over here. Definitely enough starlights to chain react. Oh, and we have it. The yellow player does disconnect from the match right there. That's pretty funny. I guess realizing that with that Ragnarok firing into their base here, it looks like there's some uh, ricochets happening as well. Yeah, not going to be a whole lot to stop a push from coming in on the northern side. Juggernaut's marching their way forward here. Behemoth continually pushing back the Titan army over on this side. Those are all just hollow shells. No more soul behind their eyes. 
because they've, they've been uh, abandoned by their commander. Their center brain has long since left them. Oh, since Ragnarok was angled just a slight nudge to the right. Definitely want to ricochet into the back line here. Not going to happen now. So it looks like, uh, yeah, that area's been shut down. This lab's still producing Titan. This one, not so much. You can see everybody on the red team overflowing metal now. Massive chain reaction wipes out the entire back line for the red team, and I think that's about as good as it gets. Not much, excuse me, not much left for the red team to hold on to here. Commander goes down in the water over, oh no, sorry, that was Juggernaut, goes down in the water over there. Finally, it looks like the red team does realize that they've been beat, and talk about a comeback. Had the superior economy for a significant portion of the game, but did not manage to use it to contain the victory. It's gonna be the blue team who manages to snatch, or maybe I should say it's the red team who manages to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. 